Cross. Um, yeah, hello, my name's Sam Mason. I'm leading up the data science team at the ABC. Um, obviously, this week of all weeks is a pretty big week for the ABC. So, um, one of the big challenges that we have is, uh, all media companies have this actually, how are we going to address uh, the move into obviously the, the modern time when most of the content now is happening on, on media devices and, uh, and, and uh, you know, tablets and, and the whole thing. So what we have is um, we were looking for a solution that would enable us to do real-time analytics, right? Real to make real-time decisions. What we've managed to do, and now that we've now that we have the, the Snowplow uh, Kinesis stream up and running, we've actually managed to get this working so that we can actually watch uh, domestic and international content being consumed in real time. So literally, what Russell has shown you, we actually have working on, a, on an internal real-time dashboard now. Um, which is pretty exciting because it, it means uh, where we're going to head with this is that the content editors are going to be able to watch trending topics happen and, uh, and, and adjust, adjust how, they, how it's presented in, in real time as we move forward. And this, I guess what Russ really wanted me to talk about, not so much what we're going to do, but what we have done. The, um, the, so, Snowplow, right, so we sort of got the double whammy. We got the Snowplow is in beta and we got uh, Kinesis is also in beta in Sydney. Um, so, we've had an interesting couple of months. And uh, the great thing about an open source solution, as I'm sure most of you know, is that you get to play with it yourself. So we did a lightning uh, teach ourselves Scala in one day sort of thing, and, um, and we started hunting around. So we, we fought the Snowplow code base a while back, and uh, we've managed, well, as you probably imagine, we had a number of things we had to sort out. One of the main things with the ABC charter, anyway, is that we can't send anyone's data offshore. Um, and uh, the Kinesis pipeline that Snowplow originally put out uh, defaulted to the US and we couldn't send it anywhere else. So uh, immediately we had to fork it, uh, we've done that. Um, there's a number of uh, great, great stuff we've managed to do um, as part of that forking. So we've run into uh, a, couple of, a couple of sort of minor problems with some of the, uh, the collector one of the questions that we've had a number of times is, how, how, one, one question that is, is really interesting is how do we handle uh, possible uh, distributed denial of service attacks? Because this stuff gets straight into Kinesis, it gets straight in through the enrichment and straight out through the other Kinesis, through the, onto the other stream, and as you can imagine, you have a direct linear relationship between that and your, 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 your costs, your read and writes. Um, and so far, the best answer we've got from anyone, and this is, I guess I'm just sharing this with you, is that you just need to threshold that. Right now, there isn't a plan to be addressing that, um, and that, 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 that's a bit of a concern, so we're not really sure yet how that's going to happen. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, that we have, um, well, one, one of the things we had to do as well was to, to cover off uh, how we get stuff off the Kinesis stream and into Redshift. And as Russell said, um, AWS has, has released, uh, there is a connector library and there's the Kinesis client library. Um, we did initially, I think, uh, is the Redback app, is it using it incidentally? Mm, yeah. It is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, so we open sourced an app uh, that we call Redback, which, um, which any of you guys, you can grab that if you want to, and that uh, addresses some workarounds and, and stuff. Um, that reads from, it's specifically for Snowplow, it reads uh, from Kinesis Stream, the Snowplow model, um, and then it buffers it into local files, streams it to S3, and then does bulk copy into Redshift. Um, to give you some idea of the sort of numbers, this is not mine, it's not earth shattering. We just brought ABC Kids online last week. And we've got, I think, 1.1 million views, page views right now. Um, and that's just from a couple of days. So obviously a lot of people are giving kids their iPads and going, just go, go to that or something. So, um, so that, that actually brings me to another point. One of the, one of the main things that we need to do, um, as any media company does, is start looking at how do you homogenize events that are happening throughout your whole media, your multi-platform, disparate platforms. So if you like something in a radio app, is that the same as liking it on a web page? Is it the same as, um, you know, if, if uh, how's content getting shared around like that? One of the great things we're able to do with the, what we call it, we're calling it the Pulse server. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's literally like that. Listen to a stethoscope for what's actually happening uh, right now in real time. Uh, one of the things we want to do there is say, okay, um, if you come from Reddit, are you more or less likely to share this via Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus or what, you know, whatever going on. This is very much a, still a work in progress for us. Though. So uh, I guess we just wanted to, oh, actually there's one other thing I wanted to tell you guys. Anyone who wants to get in and start playing with the Snowplow code yourself, a uh, couple of things to keep in mind. There's a major release that is due, I think it was due this week. Uh, it hasn't actually come out of check this morning. Um, but 
we expect that it's the it's the Kinesis real time version two, um, and that addresses a whole slew of of, uh, of issues. So that'll be pretty exciting. We'll be straight on to that if that comes out. Secondly, if you do decide to fork it yourself, um, I would suggest, and this is just from myself playing around with it, um, we couldn't get. Uh, this, I don't know how many of you are devs. I guess for most. Um, that I wouldn't bother with the Scala IDE, just out of interest, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a flavour of Eclipse and we just couldn't get the, we couldn't get any of the Snowplus stuff to even compile in it. But uh, we had great success with um, IntelliJ and the plugin, so just just letting you know ahead of time. That's, so we were able to do that and uh, get a number of releases out that we did internally, and uh, so we're pretty happy with that as well. Um, we wrote, um, well we wrote the Redback app, so that's what we've given to, to you. We've written the Pulse server. The idea is that we want to be able to show how you can use Kinesis with multiple clients like Rust Show um, and still... Well, one of the things we want to be able to do, like moving down the track, is to be able to do like real-time um, machine learning. So we're kind of looking at, like we're talking about Spark. I know Snowplow has um, shifted their focus just in the last month or two away from the mobile side and right, they're getting right into real-time streaming again, which is great because we really need an update to the Kinesis pipeline. Um, and one of the things that is going to be really interesting is that they're looking at doing a Spark one as well, which um, I think Mahout's actually looking at using that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last point I just want to say is just, uh, so we've got a number of exciting projects coming in in the ABC internally, um, things like possibly personalised radio, uh, recommendations, for you know what what content's trending really well, um, and using a whole slew of the AWS products while we're doing it, so it's very exciting for us. It's it's I hate to say cutting edge because it's practically hemorrhaging edge. We've, we've really uh, we've we've really had a lot of fun. So that's it. Any questions? Are they going to cut your budget? <laughs> <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> no, I guess I guess uh, we're lucky in that um, we're uh, you know as you can mentioned, so as a data science team, you know we're, we're we're needed really right now, probably more than any other time. Um, so yeah, the, the, really the company's looking at us to come up with some sort of strategy to go, okay, how we how we move this forward, and Snowplow is a massive part of that. Um, and and that's a really really important point about Snowplow too is that you own the data, right? That, that's a really important point, and that was a really big thing for us at the ABC as well. Um, your flurries, your flurries been bought by Yahoo, I think. Um, uh, Web Trends, all these guys, you know, they own it and they give you aggregates. But if you try and get in there under the hood and go look, you know. One of Snowplow's points, I think they've got a great slide somewhere on their, on their website which says something along the lines of, as a data scientist, I'll ask the damn questions, right? It's, it's our data, just I'll ask the questions, right? So, so a lot of these companies grew out of the 90s where it was that, that kind of, here's the aggregates, we will pre-compute, we'll decide what you need to know and give you a bunch of metrics. So, that was a long answer, wasn't it? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, they seem a pretty good team, I've been I'm glad you said Incredibly that. Incredibly yeah. responsive. I mean, yeah, that was actually something I wanted to say. That uh, Yali and Alex have been um, immediately. I mean, really, uh, the only diff the only difficult thing has been the time zone difference. Mm. So you know, we'll, we'll we'll post stuff and they're on it straight away. Russ has organised a few phone calls, so we've had direct chats with Yali and uh, some of his guys there, um, which which has been really awesome. And, and actually, while I think of it, Russ, I just want to say thanks publicly too. The AWS guys have been really really supportive of us at the AW at, at the ABC. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and we've had exactly that experience as well. Um, we're happy to work with these guys over there, and, and I think they're, they're definitely on your radar for mm. sure. So they're, um, they're, they're, they're they're definitely in the game, that's for sure. And they're nice guys too. Mm. Counts. So, anything else? Just sure. something about Spark or Spark or what was that? Yeah, Apache Spark. Yeah. So it's a real-time framework for doing machine learning algorithms. Um, it uses Scala fundamentally, um, due to a whole bunch of immutability and built-in concurrency, and all this kind of thing. I'd, anyone who's serious about data science and isn't learning Scala right now, I'd be doing it, for sure. It's, 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 it's really becoming the, the language to, to get across. Anyone else? You can run Spark on your as well. There you go. I didn't know that. Cool. Thanks very much, Russ. No, thank you, Sam. Thanks very much for sharing your experiences.